So as we know, capacitors and inductors are energy storage elements. And if you have energy stored in the circuit, the response is obviously going to depend upon how much energy is stored. So the circuit response will depend upon the amount of stored energy, right? A capacitor is kind of like a tiny little battery, can have a, a bit of energy stored, and the result that we get will depend upon how much uh, voltage we have charged up into that capacitor. Uh, so for capacitors, uh, remember the energy in a capacitor is one half CV squared. Uh, therefore, to analyze capacitor networks, we need to know the initial voltage. And for inductors, the energy in an inductor is one half Li squared. And so therefore, we need to know the initial current. Uh, so when combining uh, series and parallel uh, capacitors and inductors, we must also calculate, we must also calculate the initial voltage for capacitors um, or current. Uh, for inductors. Uh, and we can do this with KCL and KVL, Kirchhoff Current Law and Kirchhoff Voltage Law. Uh, so let me show you an example. So I have here a inductor network and we are asked to simplify this into uh, an equivalent inductance. So two things I need to do, I need to calculate the initial current and I need to calculate the equivalent inductance. Let's have a look at the current first. So let's suppose uh, I define a I naught here for initial current and I'm going to uh, label it here on my circuit and now I need to calculate what is I naught. Well this one is a fairly straightforward application of Kirchhoff's current law. So I can look at this node here and I can apply um, KCL there. So what I'm doing here is I'm um, find, so find the initial current, initial current I naught with Kirchhoff's current law. So uh, some of the currents entering that node will be I naught plus six amps, and the some of the currents leaving will be uh, 10 amps. And so that gives me I naught is four amps. That's the initial current. And then step two is to find the equivalent inductance. Uh, so remember, inductors, like coils of wire, they behave like resistors. So in series, we add them uh, in parallel it's the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals, just like resistors. So find the equivalent inductance. Uh, so starting at terminal A uh, and looking into my circuit, the first thing that I encounter is this parallel um, branch here. It kind of splits off down these two different parallel paths. So the equivalent there is 12 millihenries in parallel with 24. Millihenries. And because uh, inductors behave like resistors, I'm just going to use that same kind of parallel notation that we previously used with, uh, with resistors. 
Then my parallel branches come back uh, into this node and then I have uh, six millihenries in series and also 10 millihenries in series. And that takes me back to my, uh, my terminal B. So this is just plus six millihenries plus 10 millihenries. Um, so calculating this, the, the combination in, uh, in parallel here is going to be a 1 over 12 milli, so converting to base units will be, um, will be that, plus 1 over 24 milli henries, all of that to the power of minus 1, um, plus 6 plus 10, so that's plus 16, plus 16. Uh, and so uh, bear with me while I calculate, or oh, this should be 16 by 10 to the minus 3, 16 millihenries. Uh, bear with me while I just calculate that one. So I have 1 over 1 divide 0 0.012 plus 1 over 0 0.024. Uh, so that one is 8 millihenries. Um, plus 16 millihenries, um, so 8 and 16 is 24 millihenries. So I have an equivalent inductance of 24 millihenries. Uh, so I can draw the, the simplified circuit. So therefore the equivalent circuit is, and we had a terminal a going through an inductor and then back to a terminal B and there was an initial current of 4 amps flowing and the inductor, equivalent inductor, was 24 millihenries. Uh, now let's have a look at another example. So here I have a capacitor network, and again I want to simplify this one into an equivalent capacitance. Uh, so I need to find the initial voltage. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to label a, a voltage here VAB uh, onto my circuit, and then I'm going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law uh, to find an expression for that voltage. So find an initial voltage uh, using KVL. Now I can take any path through the circuit that uh, is a closed loop and because the voltages on this kind of outside path here are the ones that are labeled, that's the path that I'll follow when I do my KVL. It's basically where are the voltages labeled, those are the ones that I'm going to use. Uh, so starting in the bottom left corner, I have a negative VAB um, plus 12 minus 8 plus 16 is equal to 0. Uh, so 12 minus 8 plus 16 is 20. So that gives me negative VAB plus 20 is equal to 0. Uh, so bringing the VABs to the other side, I have 20 volts. VAB is 20 volts. Uh, so that's the initial voltage. Uh, now I need to find the equivalent capacitance. Find the equivalent capacitance. Now remember, capacitors behave differently, right? So it's when you have capacitors in series, that you have to do the funny thing with the sums of the reciprocals. So let's do this in a couple of steps so that we don't uh, confuse ourselves. So I'm going to kind of take this portion here on the right hand side. I'm going to call that uh, C1, equivalent capacitance here C1. So I have uh, C1 is uh, 10 microfarads, 10 microfarads in series with uh, 15 microfarads. So it will be 1 over 10 micro plus 1 over 15 micro. I'm going to write it out as uh, 
scientific notation. Uh, like that. So that's uh, that's my equivalent of C1. Uh, so just let me calculate that. Um, so 1 over 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15 and that is 6 microfarads. So I can redraw my circuit. Uh, with my new capacitance C1 in place. So that will give me terminal A goes through a capacitor. Let's try and keep this nice and neat. goes through capacitor of 20 microfarads. Then there's a parallel branch, one of which is a 14 microfarads. And the other one is this capacitor C1 that we just calculated. And that one is six microfarads. Uh, so next step, I have this combination here in parallel. Uh, so I'm going to define a capacitance C2, which will be that combination. And let's calculate that one. So C2 is uh, 14 microfarads in parallel with six microfarads. Now remember, capacitors add together in parallel. So think about it's the surface area of the plates. Capacitor consists of two electrode plates close together and it's the surface area of the plate. So you put two plates uh, in parallel, you combine the surface area so they just add up. So C2 is going to be 14 microfarads plus six microfarads uh, is going to be 20 microfarads. Uh, so that one's nice. Uh, I can redraw that and I have my initial capacitor. The input is 20 microfarads. Goes through the value C2 that I have just calculated, which is again 20 microfarads. And those were my terminals A and B. So here I have uh, two capacitors in series. So remember, capacitors in series is the one where you have to do the thing with the reciprocals. Uh, so the C equivalent here is going to be 20 microfarads in series with uh, another uh, 20 microfarads. And because these are equal, uh, the the uh, the answer, it's a little shortcut, is going to be just half of that value, so 10 microfarads, because they're equal. If you uh, if you see the same thing with resistors, if you have resistors in parallel, if they're equal, then you just get half. Um, you could also go and calculate it using kind of this sort of methodology um, if you didn't know that little shortcut. So the equivalent capacitance here is 10 microfarads. Uh, so we're pretty much done. Uh, so therefore the simplified circuit is, and I have one capacitor that connects these terminals uh, with a value of 10 microfarads, and there is an initial voltage of 20 initial voltage of 20 volts on that capacitor.